I think you're on mute. You're on, you're on mute, Council Member Sheely. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, Recreation Committee meeting for Monday, April 17th, 2023. Um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And if we, we could, let's just take a moment of silence, please. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Uh, next on our agenda, we have the approval of minutes from March 20th. 2023. Do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you. Dewey. Okay, we have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion on that? Any opposed? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Mayor, did you raise your hand? I'm sorry. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I wanted to let you and everyone know that we have the honor of having former Mayor Pagin Hanrahan with the Trust for Public Land right with me. Um, and she's here, can join us just for a few minutes before she has to run off to uh, participate in our discussion about the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Great, well, thank you very much. Ms. Hanrahan, would you like to say anything before you have to, to leave at this point? Oh, just briefly that um, uh, Jennifer has been helping me get meetings with each and every one of the members of council. so. Um, we're getting ready to move forward and, and helping you assess all of your options. Jason and I have been working real closely together and he has a, an initial report in draft, in draft. And so as soon as the staff uh, approves it, we'll get it out to all of you and, and get moving pretty quickly here on, on helping you narrow in on, on that, whether or not to move forward with parks bonds and, and how to get that. Great. Done. Thank you so much for your time and jumping on that so quickly. I know that time is of the essence for us with uh, what we may want to do with this. And uh, I really appreciate uh, how much you've gone after this and, and gotten in front of us. And I know everybody, I speak for everybody when we say we're excited to sit down with you. So thank you so much. Any questions before we move on there? All right. Very good. Well, we'll move on to item number four, our parks and recreation uh, master plan discussion. So I can go ahead and uh, kick this off if, if you'd like me to, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Please do. Okay. So we, we put this on the agenda um, as a follow up to the email that I sent that to you all on Friday. Um, hopefully you all got it. If you have not gotten it, for those of you on this uh, meeting, please let me know and I'll make sure it gets to you. But what we sent was simply the introduction from the master plan and chapter seven and eight. These are the most important pieces of our next steps um, that makes all the recommendations based on all of the data that's in that uh, plan. We've also sent you out the that draft project list that was that was developed out, out of the plan. Um, and again, based on the email, if um, we haven't given you an, a, 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 a due date, but hopefully it'll be sooner than later. And um, we, we would just look to you to come up with your three most important priorities from the plan within your district so that we can move um, a list forward. So that's that's the big picture. Uh, just happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Jason? Jason, I, I know you're saying our three most important things. I mean, are are we saying, because I, I, I know there's huge things and then there's small things. I mean, are, are we saying these are smaller things or is it a mix or, or how should we come to you on this? I think it's probably a mix. I think there's some system-wide recommendations the plan makes, um, but there's, there's the big moves as well. So I think, you know, since the, plan is broken down into five planning districts, which are really geographical outside of the 12 council districts. You know, some of some of the priorities might be nearby or serve multiple districts. So, um, you know, 12 council members, three priorities each. We're going to have to, you know, figure out what it is in the end. And uh, so I think 
you know, you don't have to limit yourself to three, but if there's some some big picture system wide or some of the big moves that is a priority for you, I think, you know, send them along and we'll just try to uh, pull it all together and make sense out of um, an, a, a list. Okay, very good. Any other questions for Jason? Uh, yeah, Jason, uh, Dudley. Hey. Well, what would it cost us again if we implement the entire plan? Well, I mean, based on the 2021 numbers, and let me just pull it up real quick. It's that last page of the estimate. So basically you have um, total all existing and new parks. If you went system-wide total, and that's over $200 million. Okay. Um, if you look at new parks and facilities over 10 years, you're looking at about $130 million. And if you just break it down into repairs and improvements in existing parks over 10 years, it's about 90 million. Okay. Okay. I mean, the, the, the reason why I ask is because as we set up our priority list for you, I did, did read your piece. Um, I just needed to know that uh, because that could have some potential political ramifications, as we as we all know, um, and we have to really be careful at those selections to make sure that they're all inclusive. Right, and, and I will say that you know the plan recommendations are really in a perfect world, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it takes in a lot into consideration over 10 years. So um, we just have to figure out collectively how we want to apply the plan and what our goals would be over a certain amount of time to get to get some important work done based on our current population and the population that we anticipate being here in the future. Is there any specific criteria that you want us to use to make those selections and why I asked the question is that at least to me um, there needs to be uh, some correlation uh, with um, stormwater retention um, Dutch dialogue um, if we can so I'm just trying to get a good feel for how we should go about doing the prioritization. Yeah, I, I would say for new facilities, mm -hmm. we're always gonna take those principles into consideration. Mm -hmm. um, so the retro, it's kind of the, the deferred maintenance, if you will. Gotcha. I mean, that's the kind of the boilerplate stuff, whether it's a broken sidewalk, a fence that needs to be replaced, some signage that needs to be upgraded, some turf that needs to be repaired or some facility improvements that need to happen. So it's a little bit of everything there. And I saw that the mayor had his hand up, sorry. And, and, and mayor, just before you go, as, as a follow-up, I mean, things like the Long Borough Park that we've been working on for a while, things like Ferguson Village, where we have been given some land by Bishop Gadsden. Should I include things like that? Well, I think Long Borough is already, in the capital plan and we're I mean, that's an active project um so I, I wouldn't think you need to add that one but um but i think the other things yes should we consider something like the low line already in the plan as well i just off the cuff i'm thinking that since that's already got a planning grant okay if that's a priority for you certainly but it, we already have a planning grant we're working on that um, grant agreement with the federal government. Okay. I think you just need to kind of, you know, okay. that's your main priority or not. No, that that's how I looked at, at the low line, that there is potential for funding from other sources. And I just wanted to make sure that I, I should use that in terms of when I make considerations, like, is it Bradham off of R Riverland? That's a new park, right? Yeah, that, and that'll be and, in Boston County Parks and Recreation. So that would be taken care of. So yeah. I shouldn't include that. I, I got it. Just wanted to make sure I'm working in the correct parameters. Okay. Sorry about that, Mr. Mayor. 
So, Thank you. so with that question in mind, I just thought I would share um, the perspective that, you know, we, we spend money on parks now already. Uh, I mean, doing this bond wouldn't be um, new in a way. It's, it's just more intensified and able to do some bigger projects, particularly um, um, in a larger bite. So, for example, I think when we had our workshop, we shared that we had this year in this year's budget about seven or eight million dollars worth of parks related stuff that we're we're doing. And and we certainly um, I, I know things like, you know, the, the regular maintenance items are on that big, big list of 200 million and we could do some more of that. But but to me, it it it, it seems to uh, since we're going to continue that year in year out uh, investment, some people would say you need to do, do more. I get that, but um, to focus on those things that we don't have now that are kind of the the holes out there, um, you know, the the number one thing that keeps up, coming back to my mind as an example is the the W L Stevens Pool West Ashley um, needs to just totally be replaced in my opinion. Um, but those kinds of things that really require some capital up front that aren't a part of our capital plan already, um, um, but kind of above and beyond the normal maintenance and, and park replacement that we do, like playground replacement that, that's on a somewhat regular schedule. Anyway, that's my thinking on it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Sacron. Uh, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Pardon me, I got a cold, so if I cough a few times, I apologize. Um, so uh, the question, I guess, to, to piggyback on, on Mayor's um, point about adding like ongoing maintenance <clears throat> to 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 the to the to the plan, is that something that typically is included in, in some of the bond re bond referendums, or is that typically for just new projects? I guess from a strategy standpoint, and we had this discussion this morning. <clears throat> if you're a you know constituent downtown and you're you're being asked to vote on something, it's very um, visceral when it's an improvement to a park that you use currently. So whether it's additional lighting or, or um, you know new sod or, or whatever that is. So I guess I'm, my question is 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 that always included in, in in bond referendums, which is the general maintenance, or are we always thinking about potential new parks and new projects? If I, if I may respond, I, yeah. I rode by um, Stony Field last night and um, or yesterday, and it was a joy to see people out there playing soccer on our new turf field out there at a field that had not been highly utilized, um, you know, for weather conditions and other reasons. So um, another example in my brain would be like, um, Stanley Chisholm Park, where we need we could upgrade to turf rather than the the what we have now and add lights. But we already have the park, so it's not like building a new park, but significant improvement improvement yes. to an existing park beyond just going out and fertilizing the grass in the springtime. You know, adding turf would be a significant improvement. Adding the nighttime lights would be a significant improvement. Those kinds of things I think we're looking for. Thank you, Mayor. That, that, and we, I mentioned that this morning in my call. Uh, uh, Chisholm Park was one on my mind that, you know, it seems like we've got the space. It just needs <laughs> some significant improvements. So thank you. Now I understand. Yep. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just as a follow-up to um, yes, uh, Mr. Sacron, um, for instance, if, if Westchester, Let's just use Westchester as an example. Um, they've been wanting upgrades for years, like lighting, uh, even perhaps um, a new, are we going that far out with with our recommendations, where where we think that the existing park house is inadequate and needs to be replaced? Because I, I definitely think that we need to do some work at Westchester. Yes. 
I don't, I don't know what the, the master plan recommended for Westchester, but as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 it's a blank slate. Okay. I mean, you have a list of things that were in the, in, in the, um, in the master plan that, that Tom and them pulled together for us, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to it. And they might, they, they, that's what Jason sent to everybody on Friday. Yes. If, if there's some glaring thing that's not in there that, uh, yeah, that's your, you think that's the priority for, for your district or your area? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Okay. Right? I think Ms. Parker has her, Councilmember Parker yep. has her hand up. Yep, Councilmember Parker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and yes, Councilmember Gregory, I would say yes, that's it. Those are exactly the type of things. I think say everybody already knows what I'm going to ask for my list, but, um, but on, I know on, at our workshop, I know Ms. Wharton was there, but is anyone from finance here? I mean, we haven't really gotten an idea at all about, you know, what a millage increase, you know, what, how many million per millage increase, you know, is there anybody that can give us that, you know, an idea? Because certainly that kind of, you know, circles us back to the question that we're all asking is what do we ask for? I mean, you know, a new rec center and lights, that, that's a big difference. Uh, you know, how much will that cause taxes to increase? Anyone on the call that can, I mean, ballpark or do we have any idea? But we're not going for a tax increase for this. No, referendum. Right, a bond. Well, it, but, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's going it's to cost. <laughs> right. Our, our one on one this morning, um, and I think when you have your one on one, uh, a lot of those questions will be answered. Okay. 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 Could, could, could we ask uh, um, Mayor Henry hand up? Yes, uh, please do. Uh, address that, please. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that Jason is working with the finance staff. We have sent a, what I would describe as conservative series of estimates making, I mean, you have to make assumptions over the arc of the bond as to whether the tax base is stay, I mean, we usually assume a stable, not growing or decreasing tax base. We usually assume a pretty conservative interest rate and all those things. We also assume that all of the, the bonds are issued at the same time. And most cities don't do that because you do them in, in pieces, of course. Um, Jason has that, that the finance department will look at to be sure that, that they believe is accurate and correct. And then we will try to, um, after getting all of your input and doing some, some public survey work, we'll come back with a recommendation to you off, you know, just if I have to ballpark it at this moment, and this is, I'm nervous to say this because I haven't discussed it with your parks and recreation director, but it's probably going to be something on the order of 50 to $60 million if you do a whole lot more than that, it, it might be difficult. Um, so, but I'll, I'll talk to each of you individually about it and then you will see the table once the staff gives it the, the A-OK. -okay. I'm hoping within a few days, but I don't want Jason to kill me once we get off this call. I don't know how long it's gonna take for them to really ground truth and make sure it's accurate. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions at this point? All right. Well, thank you again for that discussion. And uh, I know we look forward to, to moving on and, uh, and seeing some good things out of this. So if there's nothing else on um, item number. Mr. Chairman. Oh, oh yes, Council Member Parker, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I, 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 thought, I thought you were gonna adjourn. I thought that was all that no. was on the agenda. Oh, no, no, we, we still have a little bit more. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, uh, no problem. Um, so we'll move on to our report from our business enterprise manager. And I see he's come on the screen, Justin Braddock. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just an update for um, the committee is coming on board October 17th of last year. Um, I decided to spend the first 90 days to build a foundation and a platform in which this position would operate under. Um, 
try to figure out where that umbrella lies, sort of what fell under um, my responsibilities or what stayed within the department. Um, I met regularly with Mr. O'Rourke um, on sort of the, his idea and the plan that he had built out in the master plan. Um, we took a lot from it. Some of it, as he had presented in the master plan, um, we do not believe is the direction this department should go in serving individuals outside of our community. Um, I think we need to really focus on what opportunities um, we can provide our residents. Um, so after January 21st, we had a business plan and pro forma approved. Um, at that point, I began um, reaching out to local decision makers. Um, during that first three months, I built a network of almost 963 decision makers here in the community. Um, I've already had one-on-one -on -one discussions with 196 of those, um, and those are going to be long-term conversations. Um, a lot of them are planting seeds, building um, and growing those roots over time. Um, since February 1st, we have brought in 22,500 worth of sponsorship dollars. Um, there's another 7,500 currently in the mail. Um, so that would take us north of $30,000 since February 1st and sponsorship dollars. Um, another 15,000 roughly in value and kind. A lot of that is going towards marketing efforts. Um, and then we currently have about $90,000 worth of proposals um, that have been presented to decision makers and are currently being reviewed um, as we go back and forth on discussions. And then we've already got 65,000 pledged for 2024. Um, not starting until February, budget cycles had already passed. Um, for 2023 year. So luckily able to get in those um, talks already this year, try to get the first stab at dollars for the 2024 um, year. On top of just the sponsorship side, um, we're revamping marketing. It's a, there's a current stigma about, around recreation and what that looks like here in the city. Um, some people refer to it as sort of babysitting, daycare, place just for their kids to burn off steam. Uh, but I do not think that is the approach or the impact we are having on the community. Um, we are the first line of physical and social development for these kids as we're reaching kids three to five all the way up into their middle school years. It's, we're impacting their physical development we're bringing them into a team setting and having an impact on their societal um, growth as well. And those are stories that need to be told. Um, right now, we just do not have the capacity or the ability to tell those stories um, with Facebook and Instagram being new to the, new to the department. Um, despite reaching 325,000 people through our venues last year, uh, we already only have 3,000 people on Facebook. So trying to get that messaging out, um, telling the stories of those kids um, is something that I think we need to put a lot more focus and attention to. Um, in doing so, it will increase the value of the programs that we are putting forth and therefore increase the value of the sponsorships that we can bring on to support those. Um, so at this time, I'm not going to go any deeper um, unless there are any further questions. Any, any questions? Um, Council Member Sacron? Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Justin, thanks for, for that update. I guess my initial question and then just one comment is, you know, what, what is the one thing that you've seen you know, since starting, like the biggest opportunity for, for your position and I guess uh, the rec department? Yes, thank you, council members. I think the biggest opportunity um, is just we're starting with almost a value of zero. Um, we already have some partners that have come in, local Harris Teeter, Diggs, Roper. Um, those Roper conversations need to be reviewed going forward as well. Um, but if you look at the number of 
residents or individuals that we reach on a yearly basis, we're exceeding what the Charleston Battery is pulling in for their athletics. We're exceeding what the River Dogs are bringing in. Um, and as ESG, um, which is environmental, social, and governance, is becoming a huge part of corporations right now, as we are bringing multi-million and billion dollar um, either businesses, organization, manufacturing here into the city, it provides them an opportunity to reach their ESG goals, but contribute back to the city for a common good and our development. Uh, thank you for that. I couldn't agree, I couldn't agree more. And I guess the last comment that dovetails to your, your comment regarding basically promoting all the good stuff that, that we do um, is essentially, excuse me, is our, is our social media kind of outreach and our, and I've said this before to the mayor and it's kind of preaching to the choir and something I've mentioned is just our website and how we promote throughout the city and communicate. Um, I think there's certainly room for improvement there, um, particularly with Instagram and Facebook and uh, getting into the communities. But I just want to say thanks for, for what you're doing and you're spot on with those two, two items. Thank you very much, sir. Any other questions for Justin? Justin, you mentioned the um, you, you mentioned the in kind. I think fifteen thousand or something like that. What type of in kind? I know you said marketing, but what kind of in kind were we looking Correct. at? Correct. Currently, we're working with Charleston Radio Group. Um, okay. So they operate five different radio stations here in the market. Um, one thing that we're working is event creation. Um, we've already spoken with Mayor's Office of Children, Youth, and Families, Police Department, Parks Conservancy, getting cultural affairs on board. We're all competing right now for one event, which is movie nights. Um, it, it does not make sense for five different departments to operate at a 10% capacity to reach a very small scale of people. Um, with talking to the each department, we're only reaching 25 to 50 people per event um, while paying for movie screens at our cost, popcorn, whatever it may be. Um, so it's not friendly to finances or the staffing time. So bringing everybody together, we're looking to create a music and movie series in the summer downtown at Gadsden Borough Park um, in which we can all lend whatever assets we have available to us to reach 500 to 750 people per event and use that as a revenue generating opportunity as well. Um, but it's also in a great location downtown where it's a free event to um, some of our inner city communities. So it's accessible, whether it's by carta or walking. Um, so we can provide a large scale family friendly event downtown that benefits the community, but is also financially sustainable. Very good. Um, Council Member Parker, I think you have your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do you, where are we reinvesting these dollars? Well, where, where are these funds being reinvested, whether in the community or programming or, or what? Yes, Council Member. Um, right now, we have created a enterprise account um, where all of these dollars are going back into. Um, that decision on where those are going is outside of my scale and would need to be in a conversation with Director Yarborough um, on where we are allocating those funds. Um, but ideally we are investing them back into our programs um, to increase the quality of the experience the kids are having while participating in the programs or increasing the quality of our facilities as well to provide them a better experience. Councilmember Parker, if you don't mind, I'll jump in. Thank you, Justin. Um, this is Lori. So the first year of budgeting with Justin, um, there was some numbers thrown around and I did not think it was fair to bring Justin in and say, here's your goal, make it, um, and, and your salary is attached to it. That just somehow didn't seem fair. So, uh, and, and I don't think he would have accepted the offer either. So um, we've been working in, in a more relatable way, trying to put some real numbers to this. Is it 60,000 the first year? 
realizing that Justin's got to create um, a foundation and the relationships. And honestly, what he's managed to do some research on and pick away at is we have a lot of value, but we've got to be able to demonstrate that to these folks that are willing to spend money. So um, instead of just saying it's a dollar and then we're going to invest it here, we've kind of grown it a little more organically than that. Um, but we will put those funds back into our programs as needed. We've done that with all the sponsorships that we've managed over the last 10 years to get in this department. Um, but we have not hemmed ourselves into where Justin's got to bring in 200,000 or we don't get to do A and B and C. So those programs are not attached to those dollars at this point, but we will start working as those dollars come in to identify uses. All right. Caroline, thank, uh, thank uh, you, Councilmember Parker. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you. All right. All right. Any other, any other questions or comments for for Justin or Laurie? Well, um, well, great work so far, Justin. I'm excited for about what you've done and and where you're headed. So, um, thank you very much for all your work and and I've seen you jumping in doing other things, driving wreck buses and all kinds of other things too. So, thank you for the extra work you do outside of your job description because I know you're very very valuable to our recreation and parks departments. So, thank you so much for all you do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Sheely, I'm glad you said that he uh, I think the best way that Justin's found to understand this department is to immerse himself in it. So his coworkers have asked his help for unloading things and setting up things. He uh, he was the uh, Easter Bunny a couple of weeks ago at a couple of sites. So he really has joined in and worked with everyone, even though his position is very unique to this department. But he, it's helped him understand um, our community and who we serve and who we are a lot better. So he's, he's been a great fit to the department. We're thrilled to have him. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for being a team player. Appreciate you it. Yes, thank, you. thank you for doing <laughs> that. Buddy. Now I am impressed. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> thank you, Justin. It was a joy. <laughs> All right. Well, that takes us through our agenda here. I think uh, council member Parker had something else. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know we have a little bit of time, so I, I know staffing wasn't on the agenda, but um, I do just have some questions or would like to discuss some of the staffing or field maintenance, park maintenance um, issues. I know at our last committee meeting, we chatted about staffing and, you know, it, it all, you know, number wise, seems great but we certainly you know I, I know in my neck of the woods the fields I know our crews do a great job with with the crews that we have um, and the equipment and you know what we're able to do um, I know they're spread thin but um, I am just curious that you know at some point if we if we don't have the staffing capacity to do what we need to do you know can this committee discuss you know contracting some services out or or what are the needs there, you know, and how can we as a committee help these departments? Um, I'll just give you an example over here on the island. Um, everybody's sort of crammed into all these fields at the rec center, but we have some really beautiful uh, baseball fields and parks and, and things that can be utilized. It's just that they're not always able to be uh, maintained, I think, you know, regularly to where they can be used. So I just didn't know. I know that was a long one, Mr. Chairman, but what your thoughts were as a committee, um, what if we can do anything? Yeah, um, yeah I mean, um, certainly, Laurie, let me know, you know, what we can do as a committee and how we can how we can help you get staffed up and, and get things going in the right direction, you know. Yeah, uh, so Jason Kronsberg and I work pretty closely on that um, and, and have with the folks that are available to both of us in our departments as well. I couldn't speak to the specifics of Jason's staffing right now. Um, we have actually done a little better this year. We are especially seeing an uptick in full-time positions and people applying for jobs. Um, I, 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 like I said, I cannot speak for, for Jason um, because it's a tough market out there that where he's trying to do it, but we have seen more folks applying for rec specialists and athletic supervisors and, and positions like that in our department, especially where it ties to full-time. 
Um, I do believe that is a direct result of, of some of the additional hourly payments that you all have, have helped pass and work on um, and the recognition that that's gotten. Uh, so that's been helpful to us. Um, and we also rely very heavily on volunteers, but I'd have to let Jason speak to where he is in terms of his staffing. I just know it's very difficult to find trades craftsmen people out there um, in terms of if you try to get somebody to paint your house, you're on an eight month wait list. And so I have no idea where they are, but I know that's a tough one to fill. Yeah, we, we've pretty much held steady with our staffing, um, although we're getting better, uh, let's see, more positive feedback from our existing staff with their raises. Um, but across the board, we're still at the same open percentage versus filled percentage. And um, it's not a new issue that Councilmember Parker references. Um, we always try to keep up with the recreation scheduling. The recreation scheduling does not get lower. It just gets more. And um, we've got six staff members that do ball field maintenance. And they go from Daniel Island to John's Island. And uh, it's just, it's hard to, to get everything. And our ultimate goal is to make sure we get the field maintenance done for the, prog or for the programmed or scheduled, um, schedule that the Recreation Department gets to us. We don't always get it done. Most of the time we do. So it's hard to kind of keep adding more when you don't have any more people to do it. So it's just, a, it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, I don't have a, a good answer for anyone on it. Um, you know, outside of talking about affordable housing and why people live in Charleston, um, you know, our positions that typically are advertised, people aren't moving to Charleston to take these jobs. So it's, it's a really hard proposition. Well, Mr. Chair, may I jump back in? Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. And thank you, Laurie and Jason. So I know we're not going to solve, you know, that problem today. <laughs> but um, as far as, you know, maintenance goes, and since we have the enterprise manager on the line, I know I've said this before, you know, what about getting these sponsorships to sort of take on these fields for a season? Um, if, again, I'm using... James Island as, you know, this is all I know. So Council Member Sacran, uh, Council Member Gregory, uh, Council Member Shealy, you know, if, if help me here, you know, guide me with, I don't know your, the situation with your fields and your district. So I'm just using James Island as an example. But um, like I said, we have beautiful fields, uh, but we are, we're stretched thin. I mean, we only have so many crews and they're doing everything citywide. So how can we, um, Again, maybe not as much staffing, but you know, contract services out, um, gain sponsorships to help, you know, with the field maintenance for a season. You know, how can we help you? You know, it's because ultimately we all want the same thing. I mean, we want the we have beautiful parks, we have beautiful fields. Um, let's utilize them. But how do we best keep? You know, how do we keep them maintained and? you know, looking nice so that everybody can use them both for our programming and, you know, on the weekends with their families. Well, Councilmember Parker, I can tell you that Justin has already been looking heavily at um, ball field signage, ways that he can directly bring in money to areas um, that kind of is on the back of the popularity of those sports programs. Um, and, and you know this well from the James Island area, I think, I think it goes. Um, I think we, we as long as we hit companies and businesses in their correct budget cycle, I think we can we can show value and I think they'll want to buy in where we're going to have to do it carefully, though, or with some some really hard efforts is in some of our areas that um, are more inner city, um, some of our areas that have some disparity in terms of economics um, and, and those kind of things. So we may not have some of those field sponsorship signs in some of our parks downtown where some of our um, inner city teams play. And so we're going to have to share the wealth. But Justin is definitely looking at that as a way of trying to advertise, sell those advertisements um, in all places. Um, I don't want to divulge any of the companies he's talking to, 
but he's got some some fairly big places out there that he's talking with. It just doesn't come together as quickly as we may want it to. But I think if we're able to generate that revenue stream, we could do that with our parks department is to make sure that we invest money back into those fields with having some, you know, certain things done every year annually so that the fields are in the best shape they can be and assisting Jason and his crews with, with some of that extra field maintenance to make our ball fields the best they can be. Council member Sacron. Uh, uh, thank you, chair. <clears throat> and thanks Laurie for that. And councilwoman Parker, you're, you're absolutely correct. And I guess I'm just trying to understand that the issue is it's not an issue of funding, right? I mean, it's an issue of staffing uh, as a small business owner. I'm, I'm, I would happily sponsor um, any of the downtown parks um, and fields. I'm more than happy to do that. But I guess my question is, Jason, if all of a sudden you saw an influx of, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars uh, to be dispersed around some of the fields, it's it's a matter of staffing and in, in getting folks to come out and maintain and, and do the work, right? Yeah, and if if we were to figure out a contract scenario, we just have to. I'm sure there are companies out there that do that, and we could get them on a routine okay. schedule, but but yes, to get through your point is, it's it's staffing across the board. It's 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 having the people that know how and can spend the money, provide the oversight for the contractors, but then getting that. So yeah, this it's a little bit of everything. All right. And, and I'll say honestly, looking at some information I shared with you all a couple of meetings ago, if you look at our numbers. Um, our numbers right now for participation are so much higher than they were even four years ago this time, three years ago this time. When we register for youth sports, we don't say the first 1,000 kids that register get in and the rest of you don't. We take registration for an entire period. And right now, our numbers are high um, and huge. And we've had to get creative in how we offer sports so we started doing little kids basketball in the fall instead of in the winter we may have to do that with some other sports um so we may be doing t-ball with the four and five year olds you know in the fall instead of in the spring when i'm doing other fields we're just going to have to figure out the best ways to take the resources we have and, and make them work so uh but but jason is fighting an uphill battle <laughs> from us because every year we add more more individuals to this program, it just makes it harder to keep that schedule. Mr. Yeah. Chairman, okay. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, we know, I see the huge uptick and, and that's why I'm here really just, I mean, what can we do, you know, as a body? I mean, I, you know, I've only been here a year and a half, but um, I just, you know, what can we do? Sorry, more specifically, I mean, like you said, contracting these services out for specific parks, you know, is it is it having these specific parks and, and letting you know and you getting a number? Or, you know, does does that I mean, is that us helping you, Jason and Lori? You know, we, we know that you're stretched in and we're basing obviously all of our coaching off of volunteers, but um, the parks maintenance, you know, the actual maintenance is, is a different story. And again, I know it's not going to happen overnight, but with the enterprise manager on it, obviously good time for discussion because we're here and we can help. Yeah, we just have to figure out what the scope of work would be, make a budget request for annual contract maintenance and, and just and determine that you know, again, like and like I've explained to you before, we work based on the schedule that recreation provides us, and we just want to make sure that um, you know we're maintaining the correct areas. But yeah, as, if we make a budget request, we figure out what that scope of work needs to be. I mean, that's another way to do it. We can um, certainly take the pressure off of the six folks that do that work, and you know, figure out how to kind of do a hybrid contract maintenance. When I started here at the city in uh, 2010 as a project manager, then in 2012 got more into the operations side of things. Um, since then we've grown our contract maintenance program. Yeah, twofold at times because of the territory that we have to cover and it's just not enough people to get that work done. 
So it's certainly an, an option that we should consider. Yeah. You know, I mean, we do it with, with sanitation right now where we just have uh, Trident Waste does outside of 526 in West Ashley. Um, I think it's Republic that does Daniel Island, but, um, you know, and maybe there's a, maybe there's something we can look at there. I don't, you know, I don't know, just, just an idea the way they, the way they've done it um, to help out with, with the need there. Yeah. I mean, right now we, like for instance, we, the Greenway is a contract maintenance. All of Daniel Island grass cutting is con, con, uh, contract maintenance. We do all the infield prep, um, but we have contracts on um, Car Richardson Park. We have contracts on the African American Museum. Uh, we have contracts on a number of newer parks around the city that we're just not really capable to, based on the number of crews that we have. To take care of them so it's i mean it's what we do already we just gotta you know if that's the, the directive we'll try to figure that out okay well thank you jason uh council member gregory yeah um and maybe this is something that uh, um we need to discuss later um laurie over the last couple of meetings uh we've been having people coming in and, and um alleging a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and I think the latest was the um, Easter egg hunt at X number of park versus other parks. And I know where they're trying to go with that. Um, is there a way for us to um, respond in kind? Because it because it's just it's just being left out there, right? Uh, and I mean, we know better, uh, and that there is an answer to why you do this one versus the others. Because if you did them all, you were talking about what a hundred and something <laughs> Easter egg hunts. I mean, I just <laughs> I, I, and the point I'm making is that I just don't like that kind of stuff to be lingering out there, implying that there we're doing this in some type of um, offhanded for lack of a better term absolutely way. and i i agree with you it's it's not anything that i stomach very well either um mo mostly for the staff that work here um you, you know the city pays me a fair salary hmm. to try to make decisions and 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 manage things but everybody else is kind of doing their job and so i did send a memo um last week after city council to this, this committee, the standing rec committee. And then at the mayor's suggestion, which I thought was a great one, I sent the same memo out to the rest of city council um, that kind of talked about the number of events we had, including the fact that on the Saturday before Easter, the city of Charleston partnered with Mr. Jones's concerned citizens of the peninsula slash low country and provided a jump castle staff and prizes for the Easter egg hunt that was done at Martin Park. So um, in all, we held 12 Easter events throughout the city. Um, and on the east side, there was one at St. Julian, there was one at Shaw, and there was one at Martin Park. Um, so I think we covered that area pretty well. Um, and then we did something on the um, at Arthur Christopher um, with that group and we did something at McMahon. So we tried to cover a number of areas. I'm happy to, to go into more detail or, or take thoughts from any of you all, a better way we can do it. But given, given the old way we did it, which was one huge Easter event and the community came to us, um, we've gotten great feedback from our staff and from our community since COVID when we've gone into smaller, more manageable events and allowed families to take part in them without having to go into a 5,000 person crowd at Hampton Park and, and get in line with folks from Goose Creek and Ladson that want to take part in the city of Charleston egg hunt. So this year we had some great community events. John's Island was well attended. Um, we had events on James Island. We had events uh, and we worked at, at Thomas Johnson. We worked directly with, um, with, with Donna Jenkins um, and her neighborhood association to put on an egg hunt. So I think we're doing a lot of the things we should be doing and doing them correctly, but I am happy to share that information in some different ways, Council Member Gregory, because I assure you we're doing everything we can do to serve the needs of all of our residents, especially our residents that that need us the most. Okay, maybe that's on me. I didn't I didn't see I haven't read the letter yet. Um so 
you probably you've answered me you you have been proactive and that's all i'm talking about as long as you've been proactive I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know that that means that it, it, it still won't be talked about. But uh, I can I can tell you there's methodology and facts put around things, and that that was some very inaccurate information that was shared at City Council last week. Yeah, well, it's coming off as something more personal than anything of substance to me. Um, but but if you have if you if you've already done some response, I'm fine with that. I just went, I, I just didn't get a chance to read what you sent out. But I think the suggestion of the mayor to send it out to all of us was a good one. I, I thought so too. And mm -hmm. I, I wish I'd have thought of it myself. If you need me to resend you a copy, Council Member Gregory, let me know. I'll be happy to. I, I've got it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll go through it. Okay. And I appreciate it. But I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we weren't just letting that sit and simmer. Okay. I appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Okay. And I can respond in kind when I'm asked the question. That's even more important for me. Okay. So I appreciate. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Very good. Um, well, listen, I appreciate everybody's time and jumping on today. And um, we've got a good meeting. Um, we've got about five minutes left. If there's anything else to come before this committee, if anybody has anything. Looks like you've gotten some good sun. <laughs> I was in the sun a little bit. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, if there's nothing else, uh, thank you all for uh, for all of your efforts, all your time. Justin, thank you for a great report and all that you're doing. And, uh, and Lori, thank you for all of your efforts. And Jason, you as well. Thank you so much for for all you do for our parks and recs departments. If there's nothing else, we are adjourned. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.